Ladies and gentlemen, in this RedGamingTech.com video, I've got a question for you. Should Intel buy an ARM chip company? Because according to RBC Capital Markets analyst Doug Friedman, he believes they should. Um, basically, his stance on this is that Intel's current mobile strategy just isn't really working out for them. And the sales of their x86 chips, especially for mobile, is just not really doing as well as what it should be. One of the ways they could really quickly put a shot in their own arm would be pretty simple. It would be to buy out an arm chip maker. There are a couple available right now, but one of the the easy prey, if you will, one of the ones that are definitely up and coming and rising, but they're not so large, it would be pretty um, unlikely that Intel could cough up the cash for them, would be MediaTek, that's T-E-K. And they've been really on the rise, especially in the Chinese mobile market. Now, this market actually shares have doubled from 7.3% way back in 2007 to 14.4% uh, last year. So that's 2013. And it's not really slowing down. The freight train's definitely rolling. In fact, even Qualcomm is starting to feel the pinch from them. And the reason behind this is pretty simple. Their processors are quite literally a lower price, particularly for the low to mid range. So here's the bottom line. If you've got a situation where Qualcomm are having to, and I quote, might I add, sell stock CPU cores from ARM just to match with MediaTek's prices, what's Intel going to do? Because Intel, yes, they've got the x86 desktop situation pretty much locked down they're you know they're golden they've got a good they've got a good set of cores they've got a good roadmap great they've also got the servers sorted out as well however friedman says this and it's very difficult to argue with this very succinct statement instead of intel continuing to spend four to six billion dollars a year to enter the market higher end of spending range as it achieves success. Hypothetically, an acquisition of MediaTek may, me, may reallocate Intel's best-in-class underutilized fabs and financial resources to a rising star in the SOC world, solidifying MediaTek's market position. So it's a pretty simple idea. They basically buy a competitor, uh, which are making ARM chips, and jump into that market. Intel, however, aren't particularly super duper keen about this. They're not really interested in the ARM chips. What they want to do is push their x86. So what they're basically concerned with is you have this x86 um, situation they're in where the chips are stable. They know they get a good performance from them. And they're great for things such as, say, slim notebooks. They're great for low-end PCs, for tablets, and so on. But... What they don't want is a situation where their own products with, let's just say, um, from MediaTek or ARM, they don't want the situation where, well, these chips, these new chips, basically replace the need for the x86 and basically start slitting their own wrists. Now, a potential solution around this, you might say, is, well, what they could do is just make sure that the ARM chips are for the lowest end part of the handset so the cheaper phones and so on problem is they did try this with say the atom but realistically how long can you hold back the market because it's not like your competitors are saying oh hey these guys are deliberately pulling the punches let's just kind of chill out and keep the performance really low in the arm market no if anything they're going to smell blood and know that they're intentionally hampering their performance and then they're just going to go all in the problem is, Intel most likely have a bad taste in their mouth. In late June 2006, Intel sold Xscale PXA mobile processors. And this, of course, was Intel's last SOC or um, ARM division, I guess you could say. And they sold this to Marvel, that's M A R V E L L, technology group. And they sold this for about 600 million US dollars in cash as well as the assumption of unspecified liabilities. Now, the idea behind this was for Intel to go back to its roots, and it was x86 and core-focused technology, and this sale was completed late 2006. Now, 
Intel had really started to utilize this X scale um, way back in the early 2000s, say 2003, which is when they started to pump out chips. In other words, they weren't ever, you know, they've done this before. They've done the they've done the waltz before. The problem is it just didn't seem to go anywhere. Um, what seemed to happen is that you got this situation where Intel just wasn't really sure what to do with it. It's a very difficult situation. Um, the thing is, PCs are doing well. Um, and you've obviously got Apple, which are using them for their own range of processes. You've got Microsoft PCs and stuff. And for gamers, um, AMD, of course, have x86 pretty locked down with the Xbox, 3, uh, Xbox One, I'm sorry, and the PlayStation 4. Sod knows what the ne next uh, Nintendo console is going to be. If Nintendo have any sense whatsoever, so it won't be, but let's just hope that they do go x86 route just for the sake of the sanity of programmers more than anything. But let's assume that they do whichever one they go with. It doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is... You know, x86 isn't going anywhere, but at the same time, if my, if uh, Intel leave it long enough, you have to believe that they're going to start missing out on the ship. They do have the financial clout, they do have the cash there to buy out one of these companies and to jump in on the market. And the thing is, ARM, um, either PowerPC, all of these architectures reduce um, instruction set versus complex instruction set. All of these different CPUs have their own strengths and weaknesses the problem is just like microsoft with their uh, windows based phones it's just really difficult to enter the market and especially because you could buy these arm processors so bloody cheap particularly if you start accounting for the ridiculous markup that say samsung or apple put on their phones it becomes a very competitive market for Intel to break into, particularly because x86, of course, requires a different instruction set. So you've got these applications which, you know, you're going it, to... It just becomes a little difficult, is basically what I'm trying to say. And for many people, they just want, like, a cheap, easy to use device and so they don't necessarily give a crap about the processor all they do give a crap about is that how fast does it run does it load my facebook and does it load my internet browser quickly can it make calls if it's a phone you know can it does it have all the functions that i need does it have a good battery life and all of these different caveats it's not like intel can't have a good battery life of x86 it's just that well they're having a bit of a time of it. Anyway, guys, I'm not quite sure what I think Intel should do. Personally, I, if I were Intel, I would either buy out this company or really consider it. Because, well, you don't, you don't want this situation where three years down the line, ten years down the line, you've missed out on a really lucrative marketing deal. So, anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.